See what the funny part is, not all nutrients listed on a label reach their desired destination. The probability of which a nutrient reaches a desired destination is bioavailability. In this video, we will focus more on micronutrients as opposed to macronutrients and lower level of absorption of these minerals and vitamins with giving rise to deficiencies and finally resulting in conditions like depression, osteoporosis, scurvy, dementia and sometimes even casualties. So we want to re-emphasize that intake and absorption are equally important. Whole, real and organic food is the best way to supplement all your nutrients. A proper balanced diet will provide you the right level of macronutrients and micronutrients. But the challenge here is it requires a little bit of planning and it wouldn't happen accidentally. See, sometimes life gets in the way. In these instances, supplementation can actually help. In terms of supplementation, the best possible supplementation source that you could stick to is plant-based supplementation. What you have to remember is that there is a primary difference between a synthetically created fortified nutrient that's been added to your cereal that is being produced in a lab versus what actually naturally occurs. What we actually recommend are organic, plant-based, real food supplements from a company that has a reputable past and is transparent about their lab work. Our recommended supplementations are linked in the description below. Composition. Studies show that eating vegetables together with healthy fats like avocados or, or olive oil can greatly enhance the absorption of nutrients. For example, carotenoids. On the other hand, oxalates from spinach and tea can greatly inhibit the absorption of iron or calcium in the same meal. Phytic acid in grains or legumes can also impair an absorption of minerals. However, mineral deficiencies caused by phytic acid are very unusual except in cases where people have very restricted and limited diets and rely on single food for the most of the time. Next one is time of the day. Some nutrients are affected by the circadian rhythm as it defines our feeding clock. The digestive system works intrinsically with the circadian rhythm. When the body is misaligned with the circadian rhythm, it throws our digestive system out of whack. For instance, calcium absorption is governed by our parathyroid hormone, which is released at night. So it's recommended to have your calcium supplementation before bed. Whereas on the other hand, any vitamin D supplementation is recommended to be had at the start of the day as it would otherwise impact the levels of melatonin and affect your sleep. Form of the nutrient. The chemical form of the nutrient can also be a factor. The non-heme iron found in vegetables is considerably less bioavailable than the heme iron found in animal-based products. And also calcium phosphate is much more easy to absorb than calcium chloride and so on. And the next one is the presence of other nutrients. For instance, certain micronutrients help each other. For example, if you take vitamin C, it would assist the absorption of non-heme iron through plant-based sources. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, you have micronutrients competing with each other for metabolic pathways. An example of this instance would be if you take it too much zinc, it would affect the absorption rates of copper. However, most instances recorded of competition between metabolic pathways are purely recorded in instances of supplementation. Gut health. Because bioavailability is heavily dependent on the digestive process, our digestive system not working properly may not be able to absorb all the nutrients it encounters. And what is interesting, nutrients in food may be absorbed at the level from 20% and even up to 98%. And for example, Crohn's, IBS and other inflammatory IG tracts condition may heavily impair the ability to absorb the nutrients. Medication. If you are taking in acid blocking drugs, that would impair the absorption of nutrients such as vitamin B12, calcium and zinc. As these nutrients expect your stomach or gastrointestinal 
drug to be acidic in nature for it to be absorbed. And if you take in acid blocking drugs habitually, you might end up developing nutritional deficiencies. And on the other hand, medical conditions such as Crohn disease or anemia would affect the absorption rates of micronutrients as well. So now that we understand what could affect the levels of bioavailability, how do we naturally increase the bioavailability of our nutrients? Drink coffee an hour after your meal and try avoid combining with food dense in micronutrients. Mix your methods of preparing food. Vegetables where possible eat raw, especially vegetables like carrot, cabbage and green leaves. Blend it where you can cram a lot of your nutrients into one and soak it up. Avoid fat diets or extreme diets altogether, especially if it fits your macros, keto extremes, only protein. Have a balanced, sustainably sourced and organically produced wholesome diet, which includes meat, fish, vegetables and fruits. Get nutrients from whole foods, not supplements. Firstly, there's no research proving supplements are better, synthetically produced, so might have even fillers that might disrupt your gut health even further. Improve gut health. Avoid antibiotics, conventional medication, birth control pills. Try to introduce prebiotic fibers from bananas, onion or garlic and prebiotics from organic yogurts, bone broth and other fermented foods. Okay guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up because it really support our channel. And don't forget to comment, share and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.